Time now for the morning rush. A man police say was involved in a police shooting is behind bars this morning. Daniel Franco was arrested last night after barricading himself in a home near 6th Street and Mountain. Franco was accused of leading state police on a chase near Lomas in Washington last Thursday. After a failed pit maneuver, an officer fired a shot at Franco. The officer later crashed into another car and Franco got away. Kristen. Our next weather maker is going to hang out to our west, so we're going to be looking at some showers out over the four corners today. We're also going to keep an eye on our eastern counties here. It's possible we get a few storms getting close to that state line and into our eastern counties with that dry line setting up not only today, but for the next several afternoons. David. This morning, Los Lunas police, they're expecting their traffic stop numbers to go up. The Los Lunas police chief says that they've increased their numbers of traffic stops. This is a way of preventing a crime problem in the area. The chief says each month stops are up at least 300, 380 compared to the previous year. President Trump is preparing to meet with House Speaker Nancy Pelosi and Senate Minority Leader Chuck Schumer today. The trio will discuss the $2 trillion infrastructure program introduced by the Trump administration. Now, talks could be delayed. The White House is calling on Democrats to address the U.S.-Mexico-Canada trade agreement first. Meanwhile, the Journal is reporting that Governor Michelle Lujan Grisham will head to Washington, D.C. this week, asking the Department of Homeland Security for federal reimbursement as New Mexico continues to help aid the migrants seeking asylum. Also new this morning, the brother of the Guatemalan teen who died in Border Patrol custody is speaking out. Officials say 16-year-old Carlos Hernandez Vasquez was apprehended by border officials last Monday. He complained of being sick and later died. His brother speaking out to CBS News, saying he never thought this would happen here in America. A U.S. border processing facility remains closed this morning. Officials say a large number of sick migrants at a center in McAllen, Texas, prompted that closure. Uh, anyone taken into custody will now be taken to other locations until that situation is resolved. A New Mexico deputy is facing a lawsuit this morning. Attorney Jolene Younger says her client was driving near El Vado Lake last April when Sanibal County Sheriff's Deputy Brian Espinosa crashed into him head on. Youngers claims that Espinosa was speeding. According to the lawsuit, just two months prior, Deputy Espinosa was written up for speeding and texting while driving. UNM researchers, they're figuring out new ways to treat PTSD. Their latest treatment, ditching opioid-based drugs and using medical cannabis instead to help veterans. Now they're looking at how the use or lack of use affects veterans' behaviors, feelings, and everyday pain levels. UNM helped kickstart the research, giving them $10,000 in funding. Well, the Midwest is preparing for another round of storms. More than six inches of rain fell in El Reno, just outside of Oklahoma City. Rescue teams worked to pull people trapped in their cars and flooded homes. From the sky, abandoned cars could be seen submerged by the rising waters. Crews are now working to clean up before the next storm moves through that area. Kristen. Metro threat index at a four for today. We've got some cool morning temperatures only in the 40s, but this afternoon those will recover to the 70s. We are going to factor in more wind too. breezy to windy conditions with those south southwest winds between about 15 to 25 miles per hour. David. Also new this morning, the first round of production companies are now pulling their business from the state of Georgia. This comes with the governor's signing of a bill banning abortions after six weeks. A new Amazon studio show announcing that they're canceling plans to shoot in that state. The director is telling Time Magazine, quote, we had no problem stopping the entire process. Happening today, an Albuquerque man is expected to plead guilty to a carjacking a woman. Police say Christian Herrera is accused of jumping in the driver's seat of Karina Fernandez's car and taking off. This happened at the giant gas station on i in Coors. Fernandez says that he told her to jump out or he would kill her. New this morning, Santa Fe Public Schools now have $260 million for the next school year. The school board unanimously approved the funding last night. Now, the New Mexican reports that the budget outlines nearly $6 million for K through 5 plus. This would also add 25 summer days to the beginning of the school year and teacher pay raises. New this morning, PNM is petitioning to have the Public Regulation Commission reopen the case over the power line at Facebook's data center. The New Mexican reports that PNM filed documents showing new details. PNM's request comes after the PRC ordered Facebook to pay the $39 million for the new line. Last week, the commission denied a request to rehear those arguments. Well, happening today, Albuquerque Fire Rescue is set to put a new brush truck into use. The new truck is being used on the city's west side, and it's going to help fire crews do their job a little better. The, it was funded by city, city Councilor Cynthia Borrego. Officials say at today's unveiling, they will also discuss open space patrols for this Memorial Day weekend. Well, crews are asking people to be careful while they're out on the Rio Grande this morning. 
First responders are saying that the Rio Grande is flowing 10 times higher than normal, making it very easy to be carried off that current. The crews ask river goers to take some extra precautions. Residents are asked to use the trusted flotation devices like kayaks and boats until those water levels drop. Well, police are warning e-scooter riders about some new rules this morning. The city has partnered with Zagster for a one-year pilot program. APD says e-scooter drivers will have to follow the same traffic laws as mopeds. Drivers will be required to stay in bike lanes or on sidewalks and at least three feet away from people. Police say the scooter is going to hit the streets this week. New Mexico United on Austin Bold. They're taking on Austin Bold FC this weekend. The United coming off a 3-1 victory over Colorado Springs from the past weekend. Now that puts them solely in first place with that win. Forward Kevon Freider scoring that hat trick in the game, earning him the title of USL Championship Player of the Week for the second time this year. His kickoff for Saturday's game is set for 6.30 p.m. Kristen. Time now for a check on your Wednesday morning commute. Paseo eastbound a little bit slow as you get towards that 2nd Street exit, but no major crashes or accidents to tell you about. Even the big eye moving smoothly at the hour. David? Well, Lyft is stepping up its safety measures. The ride sharing service announced that it's adding a 911 panic button to its app so that you can call first responders in a couple of taps. Uber is adding a similar button as of last year. We are taking you back 63 years ago on this day, May 22nd, 1956. Santa Fe finished up a 104 day consecutive streak of seeing no measurable precipitation. Now the good news is the day after they did pick up over a quarter of an inch of rain, but that is a long time to go without any precip. That was on this day 63 years ago. We take you now to the five facts at number five, New Mexico United, getting ready to get back on the pitch this weekend, taking on Austin Bold FC. United coming off a three to one victory over Colorado Springs this past weekend. That win puts them solely in first place. Forward Kevon Freider scoring a hat trick in that game, earning him the title of USL Championship Player of the Week for a second time this season. Kickoff for Saturday's game slated for 6.30 p.m. At number four, the owner of a Santa Fe sculpture garden is hoping to draw attention to the city's south side, and she's selling some art in the process. Sarah Miller owns Sarah Miller Contemporary Art Gallery. Miller says that her garden began two years ago with two abandoned sculptures from the Oshara Plaza. She's also working with local community college students whose art pieces are now on display. At number three, warmer across the state today, Albuquerque. That leaves us in the 70s. Breezy to windy conditions in the showers. Still favoring the four corners. Could even see a few isolated storms out towards the eastern state line today and for the next several days as that dry line sits over the Texas New Mexico state line. As you'll notice, that temperature climb is on hold tomorrow. We get back to the warmer temperatures just in time for the weekend. At number two, traffic stops in Los Lunas will likely be going up with police stepping up their, their presence. They say this is all in the hopes of curbing crime. Now they're now finding out that some of the people they stopped don't even live there. The chief says that each month the stops are up at least 380 compared to the previous year. They're even adding new officers to the force. Now Albuquerque recently increased their stops, averaging more than 4,500 stops a month. And at number one, the Albuquerque man who state police say was involved in a police shooting is in custody this morning after a SWAT standoff. New Mexico State Police arrested Daniel Franco last night just before eight at a home near downtown. Franco was wanted for an incident last week when police say they refused to pull over for an officer. Now, during that chase, police shot at Franco. Now, they eventually tracked him down last night. He is now facing charges for fleeing, tampering with evidence, and being a felon with a gun. We're also learning that Franco is facing additional charges for allegedly shooting a man in the leg just two days before that police shooting took place.